So glad that you decided to join us this morning and we are so looking forward to spending another day with you we have lots of fun planned today we are going to sing songs and worship God as always we're going to look at a Bible story of Job who was really really tempted and had a rough life but how God came through for him and we're going to do a fun craft so let's jump up and let's praise God together <laughs>
to have the opportunity to worship God and just reflect on his greatness, his grace and his love for us and how we can just always trust him always. I want to take us through today's lesson plan. We're looking at the story of Job which is found in the Old Testament and our link to Jesus is how Jesus suffered terribly but trusted God throughout it all. Our memory verse is the verse that you guys have been doing for the past couple of Sundays and it's found in Psalm 9 verse 10 and it reads that those who know your name trust in you for you Lord have never forsaken those who seek you. So we'll be going through we've been going through this uh, memory verse and I hope that um, you've memorized it and it's uh, very close to your heart because it's very important especially in the times that we're living in and in the times that you're going through if you're writing exams right now. So before we actually go into the story of Job, I want us to grab a piece of paper or paper plates and a crayon or a highlighter if you don't have crayons like me. So if you're buying me a Secret Santa present, you know what I need. So what you're going to do on your piece of paper is you're going to draw your perfect day. So if someone asked you, what would be a perfect day for you? What would you draw? So we're going to take a few moments and we're going to draw our perfect day. But there's a twist. When you draw your perfect day, you're going to have to hold your paper or paper plate. So I'd suggest a paper plate. And you're going to put it on top of your head. And then you're going to draw your perfect day. So let's go. I'm gonna give everyone a chance to finish off um, during their perfect day. I knew exactly what mine is, so I'm done already. But I'm gonna give everyone just two more seconds to finish your drawing. Okay, let's have a look at my drawing. <laughs> 
so this is what I drew I don't know if you can see but it's not amazing and I'd like to blame the highlighter because if it was a crayon I'm sure it'd be nicer but uh, the idea around it was a warm sunny day with flowers and birds chirping that would be an ideal perfect day for me however uh, this does not look like what I had in mind and today's story, which is Job's story, is going to be a story that will teach us what it looks like sometimes when our lives do not turn out or turn out the way that we hoped it would. Because Job's story is one of a man whose life was not what he thought it would be, was not what he planned it to be. But his reaction to how the events of his life turn out is something that we're going to learn a lot from and you're going to find it amazing. And we're also going to learn just how full of wisdom God is and how full of grace God is and how we can trust him. We can trust his character that's never changing, like the, the scripture that we did earlier, that the Lord never forsakes those who seek him. So let's go ahead and watch the story of Job. There are three books in the Bible known as the wisdom literature, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Job. The first, Proverbs, showed us that God is wise and just. Yeah, we learned that God has ordered the world so that it's fair. The righteous are rewarded, the wicked are punished. In other words, you get what you deserve. But then we meet Ecclesiastes who observes, well, people don't always get what they deserve. Uh, yeah, he said the world isn't always fair, that life is unpredictable and hard to comprehend, just like smoke. And this makes you wonder, okay, well, is God wise and just? Exactly. And so it's that question that is being explored in the final book of wisdom, Job. All right, let's dive in. So Job begins with a strange story that takes place up in the heavens, which are described something like a heavenly command center. So God is there with these angelic creatures called the sons of God, and they're all there reporting for duty. And God points out this guy Job, his servant, showing how righteous and good he is. And then one of these angelic creatures approaches. He's referred to in Hebrew as the Satan. The Satan? Who is this? Well, this word is actually a title, which literally means the one who is opposed. So out of this whole crew, he is the one questioning how God is running the world. And he proposes that Job might not actually love God, that he's only a good person because God rewards him. If God were to take away all of the good things he gave to Job, then we would see his true colors. So he thinks Job is just working the system? That's exactly right. Maybe he's obeying just to get what he wants. So God agrees to this experiment and allows the Satan to inflict suffering on Job. And Job loses everyone and everything that he cares about. It is devastating. And remember, he deserves none of this. God himself said so. The remarkable thing is that in the midst of all this suffering, Job still praises God. At least for chapters one and two. But then in chapter three, we find out how he's really feeling inside. He unleashes this poem that reveals his devastation. It's a long, elaborate curse on the day that he was born. After this, some of Job's friends come to visit him to offer their help. And all of them are like, Job, you must have done something horribly wrong to deserve this. After all, we know God is just, and we know the world is ordered by God's justice and fairness, so you must be getting what you deserve. And for the next 34 chapters, the friends and Job go back and forth in very dense Hebrew poetry. His friends keep speculating about why God might have sent such suffering, and they even start making up lists of hypothetical sins that Job must have committed. But after each accusation, Job defends his innocence. And Job is innocent. He is. He's also on an emotional roller coaster. At some moments, he's very confident that God is still wise and just. Yeah, in other moments, he's doubting God's goodness. He even comes to accuse God of being reckless, unfair, and corrupt. So by the end of the dialogue, Job demands that God come and explain himself in person. And God does so. He comes in the form of a great storm cloud. Now, God doesn't give Job a direct answer. He doesn't tell Job about the conversation with the Satan. Yeah, he does something very different. He takes Job on a virtual tour of the universe. 
He shows Job how grand the world is, and he asks him if he's even capable of running it or understanding it, just for a day. He shows Job how much detail there is in the world, things that we might see every day but really don't understand at all. But God does. He knows it all intimately. He pays attention to the beauty and operations of the universe in ways that we haven't even imagined and in places that we will never see. Then to conclude, God shows Job two wondrous beasts and brags about how great they are. Yeah, they are dangerous. I mean, they would kill you without even thinking about it. And God says they're not evil. They're actually a part of his good world. And then that's it. That's God's whole defense. It's kind of weird. I mean, what was this all about? It seems to be this. From Job's point of view, it looks like God is not just. But God's perspective is infinitely bigger. He's dynamically interacting with a whole universe of complexity when he makes decisions. And this is what God calls his wisdom. So Job asking God to defend himself is actually kind of absurd. He couldn't comprehend this kind of complexity even if he wanted to. So where does this leave us? Well, it leaves Job in a place of humility. He never learned why he suffered, and yet he's able to live in peace and in the fear of the Lord. But that's not where the book ends, because after this, God restores to Job double everything he had lost. And this, again, is surprising. I mean, is this a reward? Is God saying, congratulations, Job, you passed this elaborate test? No. I mean, the whole book just made the point that Job losing everything was not a punishment. And so now getting it back isn't a reward. So why does he get it back? Well, apparently, God, in his wisdom, decided to give Job a gift. We don't know why. But what we do know is that Job is now the kind of person who, no matter what comes, good or bad, he can trust God's wisdom. And that's the book of Job and the end of our wisdom series. These biblical books of wisdom are amazing. Each one offers a unique perspective on the good life, and you need to hear all of them together as you learn to live with wisdom and in the fear of the Lord. What a great ending. I love happy endings. I love, love stories with happy endings. Sometimes I'll tell you a little bit of something. <laughs> something that I do, which is not very good. So if you're into novels and reading fiction, maybe you don't want to listen, but I read the back of my book before I actually finish the rest of the book because I always want to know that it's going to end well. So I don't like reading books if it's not going to end too well. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so what a powerful story. I love how at the end, God restores Job, Job, Job's life. He gets to have more children. He gets to see his children grow to be parents, have children and grandchildren, and just God restores his wealth. And one of the things that we learn is how Job never gave up on trusting God because he knew that God is in control of every single situation, whether bad or good, God never sleeps on us. God is always awake and is always aware of what's happening in our lives. And Job knew this so well. And this is just one of those things about God that never changes. That God is who he was in Job's time and God is who he was in your parents' time and grandparents' time and in your time. So God's character can be trusted. So I love how Job's story teaches us that. And I'm just going to remind us again of today's memory verse, which says, those who know your name trust in you. Lord, you never forsake those who trust in you, those who seek you. <laughs> so yeah, the Lord will never forsake those who seek him. People who go after God and really want to know what is God's heart for their lives, what is God telling them to do with their lives, and who just put all their full trust in him. God will never forsake us and live our lives in a way that shows and remind ourselves as well that we can trust God because he will always catch us when we fall. He will always be there when we feel uncertain. Even when we feel certain, God is still around us. So God is not only around us when we're doing well, but God is also around us when things aren't going so well. He's always in control. Shall we pray? that we will always remember that God is here to help us and that we can trust him. So let's close our eyes. 
Thank you, Lord, for Job's story. Thank you, Lord, of about how just he reminds us of Jesus' life and how Jesus suffered greatly on earth, Lord, so that we would be in relationship with you because he trusted you, Father. I pray, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, that, Lord, whatever it is that's in each and every one of our hearts, Lord, that's weighing heavily on our hearts, that, Lord, we give it to you, Lord, and trust you with it, God, and know that, Father, you constantly ready and willing Lord, to hear our prayers, to hear our cries, and hold our hands, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that we can trust you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. So I'm going to leave you. Enjoy the rest of the lesson with Fran. Enjoy the craft, and have a great week ahead. Bye. Thanks, Sofiso. Yes, yo, Joe, what bad luck did he have? But actually, it wasn't bad luck. It was God's sovereignty because God knows everything about the whole universe. And even though we might think, what is God doing? He knows exactly what he is doing because he's holding the whole universe in his hands. And he promises that he makes everything work together for the good of those who love him. And that is why Job could hold on to God's promises, even though his life was falling apart. And God blessed him tremendously for it. So we are going to make our very own Job booklet that we can use to retell the story of Job and to think about what Job had to go through and what made him hold on to God and onto his faith. So in the week, I have sent um, your parents this template. If you haven't received it, no problem. Drop me a message um, and I'll send it to you. What we're going to start with is we're going to cut out our booklet. So on the solid lines, you'll see all around the side, we're going to cut that out. Then we're going to fold it in half and also cut on that solid line. Okay, so once you've cut out the big outline of the booklet, we're going to fold it in half this way. Make sure the corners are nice and neat on top of each other. And you fold that in half like that. Like that and then you're going to cut on this solid line so you go from the folded side and cut on that solid line this is just going to allow us to fold our book in the right order so you only cut on the solid line from there to there so that the booklet is open okay then you open up again and now you fold it in lengthwise so fold it over push it down and then you're going to make almost like a diamond shape of the booklet and fold it together like that so that the story will go in the right order okay so on all the dotted lines you want to fold and then you make sure that your front page is the front of your booklet so we can do our last fold and then our booklet is ready but it's not done because every single part of this story asks us to do something or to color in the page. So let's do that together. So it's the story of Job and it's by, you can then write your name so that you know that this is your booklet because you are making that your own. I've said it's by Mason because I'm sure he's going to help me color it in later. Okay, so if we go on to our first page, it says that Satan accused Job before God. And God allowed Satan to test Job. That was in Job 1. So now we have to draw a picture of Satan above. Ooh, I don't really know how to draw that. Um, let's see. I think he's a mean, angry man. And maybe he's got... Oh, I'm really not a good draw. <laughs> With some smoke coming out of him. And he's angry. I don't know. I'm sure you guys can do a better job of me. But we're going to draw Satan in that block. And it's Satan thinking about Job and telling Job, telling God that they must attack Job to see if Job will stay true to his faith. On the second page, it says Satan took away Job's wealth and his family. So that one's pretty easy. You guys can just color that in. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but um, you color that picture in and make his house so pretty. On the next page, it says that Satan afflicted Job with terrible sores or boils. So you'll see all the dots on there. I think we should make those dots red, 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 because I'm sure it was very sore on his body. Poor Job. I can't believe it. He stayed true to God and to his faith 
throughout all of this. Isn't that amazing? We must remember this when we go through difficult times. If Job could do it, we can also, because we've got the Spirit of God in us to help us get through these difficult times. And there it says that Job still worshipped God and did not sin. So here we see Job's three friends. Remember them from the story? They came to comfort him, but then accused him of maybe he's sinning, and that's why it's going bad with him. So on this picture, we have to draw their faces. So we're going to draw little eyes and some eyebrows and a nose and a smile. I don't know. You guys can get creative. Maybe they, maybe some of them are angry. and You can draw them angry faces or happy faces, however you would like. And obviously, color it in. So there's my three faces on that one. And this one says that God spoke to Job and showed Job his majesty. Because God showed Job that he's not just dealing with Job, he's dealing with the whole universe. The stars and the planets and every single person on this earth. So even though we might think God doesn't know what he's doing, he certainly knows what he's doing and he's taking it all into account. So we can't question him because we can't even imagine all the things that he is doing. So on this page, we have to connect the dots. So take your pencil or your crayon and let's connect the dots. And what do you think it's going to make? Let's see, let's see. That's right, it's the earth. And it's just a reminder for us that God really is in control of the whole earth, the whole universe, and of your life. And at the end, it just says that God blessed Job and gave him all that he had lost and more. And that is our encouragement, that God really will make all things work together for the good of those who love him. Whether our reward is here on earth or whether it is in heaven one day when we get to spend eternity with God, he will reward us for staying true to him and staying true to our faith. So kids, I hope you enjoyed the story of Job. Finish your booklets. Go and tell the story to mom or dad or to your brother or your sister or your friend. And let's be light bearers in this world, sharing the light of God in the good times and in the bad, because God is with us always. Have a blessed week. We see you guys next week. We are launching a five-week series on the book of James. We are going to learn how to be strong in our faith. For five weeks, we're going to look at this book and it's going to be amazing. We're going to learn so much from it. So don't miss out. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Only